So we were talking about the issues of adding more states to our finite state machines with sensors and those numbers of states coming out of control. And the solution to this is something called factoring states using variables. The idea here is rather than having a specific state for each possible sensor value, we have a base state and we use variables to remember the value of the sensor and dictate certain transitions. For example, we could take our east-west go state and we could have a chunk of it that corresponds to whether a pedestrian was detected or whether there's a car waiting to turn right. We use variables to remember whether those values are true or false and then we just require extra tracks checks on the transition. Here's an example of that same finite state machine from before, our merely finite state machine, um, using just a single north-south uh, car flag, a state variable. Um, this eliminates one of those states entirely and we can see some really interesting things going on in this finite state machine. So firstly we look at this transition down there. One of the states, the change state that we've had before, is completely gone. Why? It is unnecessary anymore because we only move along this path when both this timer has triggered and there is a car at the north-south, or we've seen a car in the past at the north-south. We transition right to stopping, and we've turned our light yellow, and we wait for the timer to trigger before we move out of that state. What you should also notice is that this transition to the ready state has changed. Rather than just checking whether the timer has triggered, we're checking that the timer has triggered and there is no car. That's what the exclamation mark means. It means that the flag, the state variable, car north south flag, is not true at that point. Why? Because if it is true, we would go through this transition down here. It's only if it's explicitly not true that we move into this state. The final thing that you should notice is this transition out here. This is the new transition that we've had to add now we have this new flag. It is a self transition, a transition from the state back to itself, which toggles the value of that state variable from false to true. And whenever we are in a state where that could happen, we must add a new if statement to allow that variable value to change. So, just to be really clear, the base state represents a cluster of states and their transitions out of them depend on whether we're moving to different states or different sub-states um, and sometimes only a change of flag is necessary. To implement this, it looks like the what you can see on the screen here. Practically, that's very, very simple. Um, we've added two more lines. We've added two um, state variables, the car east-west side um, flag and the car north-south flag, and as we'll see on the next slide, we've implemented that using our very standard uh, Java logic, which you can see down here. So we can see our first if statement up here, checks what state we're in, then this one checks if our sensor, our timer has triggered and the car north south flag is not true or if this timer has triggered and the car north south flag is true. However, there's, if you look carefully at the previous diagram, there's still one more transition missing and you can see it appear on the bottom of the next slide. We've added that self transition to toggle the value of the car north south flag there. The problem that you can probably see with this implementation is that it rapidly leads to a very, very long series of nested if-else statements, and there are other much better ways of structuring our code to make it more readable.